As a kid, there were two things I loved doing. Maths and... Slaying demons. Unfortunately, the classic Diablo that started it all isn't as immortal as the wildly successful Diablo 2, and it's much harder to get these days. But for those of us who remember, this is our nostalgia trip straight from hell. Ah, Tristram, the foreboding hollow music that played each time you stepped foot in town the eerie red glow of the cathedral, and the first steps into the dungeon below. I kid you not, this game gave me nightmares as a kid. Blizzard's Diablo was a revolutionary dungeon crawling RPG, combining elements of dark fantasy with a then impressive level of customization. Players could choose between three classes in the original game, the warrior, sorcerer and rogue. In retrospect, the Rogue was actually the only class I never played myself in single player or online. I only did this playthrough purely for this episode. Caught between the reliable sword and board style of the Warrior and the incredibly overpowered mana shielded artillery mage builds, the Rogue was perhaps the most challenging of the classes. But since we're Toxophiles and this is archery pop shots, we're doing this no matter what. While all the classes can use bows, rogues have unique benefits and synergies. Firstly, bows require both strength and dexterity to equip, and rogues have the highest maximum dexterity. Secondly, rogues get more damage from increasing dexterity. Thirdly, rogues have the fewest animation frames when attacking with the bow, effectively giving the rogue the highest rate of fire with the bow, though in turn the rogue has a slow attack speed with melee weapons. This essentially means that, for the most part, every rogue is going to be an archer. This in itself presents many challenges for new players, especially in single player. Since there's no one to tank for you, you're fairly unprepared for most encounters. While your high dexterity gives you some protection by improving your evasion, you lack the strength to equip the heaviest armor, and you also lack the mana reserves to exploit the mana shield spell that makes sorcerers nigh unkillable. You pretty much have the worst of both worlds, your only advantage being a ranged attack that is actually difficult to hit. The reason for this is the isometric view. We've seen much more fluid ranged combat in the following Diablo games, but the original game only had set angles of attack, and hitting a target moving across these angles meant that your arrows simply wouldn't hit. It took a lot of practice to correctly aim at a moving target, and with early equipment it would take multiple hits to bring an enemy down. The pro tip that most players wish they knew decades ago was holding the shift key to keep the character stationary, preventing them from moving when clicking on the ground. This simple key press was the difference between being slaughtered after stepping to a new level and being able to clear our enemies on the edge of aggro distance. And believe me, you really needed that edge as you got deeper and deeper. With the loot based mechanics of dungeon crawlers, players are at the whim of the random number generators to get good drops. The rogue is hit particularly hard, next to the warrior, the rogue is very gear dependent and you can play hours without getting a decent bow. Much of the rogue's gameplay is about careful navigation, not aggroing too many enemies and making the most of straight hallways. This becomes all but impossible as you get to the caves and later hell, as the dungeons open up to become wider with more ranged enemies. Yet while ranged enemies are the bane of warriors, they are very advantageous to rogues, you can shoot at them while kiting enemy missile fire. If anything, the micromanagement of the rogue makes it the toughest class to play, compared to spamming left click with a warrior or spamming chain lightning for sorcerers. Fights are a race between picking off enemies before running out of HP and potions. This is really classic Diablo. To be honest, I was quite nervous stepping into hell. I've been there many times before as a teenager on Battle.net, running nightmare and hell difficulties with a bare naked mage. But creeping down the bony stairs with an under-equipped rogue was intense. Every step could trigger an entire mob of balrogs and succubi. Each room was preceded with a barrage of arrows to make sure as many enemies were whittled away before they closed in for the kill. It was terrifying. Oh man, even after all this time, seeing the screen filled with lightning bolts was panic inducing. 
This in Diablo made your corpse and items remain where they were. Throwing up town portals was crucial, you know, just in case. Otherwise, it was a long walk back. Good luck getting past all the enemies guarding your corpse with no equipment. With a decent bow and good in confidence, the walls of hell began to be painted red, or yellow, or blue, depending on which specific enemy was spawned. The familiar quests were cleared out, Lazarus was slain, and the portal to the final level of hell opened. The four corners were cleared out and turned, each exposing another set of high level enemies and bosses before the final section was opened. Big Red himself. No tank, no overpowered fireballs. This was going to hurt. Actually, that was a lot easier than I thought. Huh, I don't know about you, but Diablo 1 was really what started my interest in Blizzard games. Before Warcraft, before Starcraft. I spent many hours on the dial-up internet in the late hours of the night crawling through the dungeons, more so as a warrior or sorcerer, but with a sprinkle of rope for a change. While most of us will probably agree that Diablo 2 aged much better, and combat in the original game wasn't as mobile, we can't forget where the series came from, the heart and soul of Diablo on PC. Thank you for following my nostalgia trip. This is New Sensei, and as always, shoot straight and aim for your best.